Hello, Bio9. Well, we are now on to chapter 14. I bet you never thought we'd get here, right? Um, some of you are already familiar with transcription and translation. Uh, if you are, that's great. Um, we're going to be covering the major steps of transcription and translation now. So transcription is the process of making RNA. And basically, you have a few steps. You have the initiation of the process, the elongation of the molecule, and then termination of the process. And sometimes you could say termination of, um, you know, sometimes people think that it's termination of the RNA itself, but it's not. It's stopping the process. So let's get going. So the gene is the segment of DNA that is being turned into a protein. All right. And I, I know you guys are already pretty familiar with that. I'm going to move my camera around a little bit here. Hold on just a sec. Sorry about that. I needed to move my camera around a little bit. So the gene is a segment of DNA that makes a functional product. If, if you have a piece of DNA that doesn't make anything that works in the cell, then it's not really called a gene. It may have some names like a, a dormant gene or an emerging gene, but that's for a different class. RNA is the end product of what the gene's instructions are supposed, are coding for. And so, RNA is intermediate between DNA and the protein. So you have RNA, let me get my handy dandy pen out here. You have DNA that gets transcribed into RNA and then RNA that is translated into protein. And it's good to remember that DNA is made up of nucleic acids. RNA is made up of nucleic acids. Therefore, you can think about it as kind of like a nucleic acid language, right? Uh, protein, on the other hand, protein is made out of amino acids, AA, okay? So you have uh, 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 nucleic acids here for DNA and RNA, but protein is made out of amino acids. So that's how I remember that this was translation. You're translating from nucleic acid language to amino acid language. And transcription is the process by which the code, the DNA is coded, the DNA code, sorry, is transcribed into the RNA molecule. So transcription itself literally means the act of making a copy. And it's not an exact copy, okay? So in genetics, what we're talking about is transcribing RNA from DNA. And it turns out that the DNA sequence itself is not altered. Oops, during that process. Sorry, I'm still trying to master these pens here. So it turns out that genes inside of our genome, inside of our chromosomes, can also be called structural genes. Structural genes basically are the genes that are going to be producing the stuff that allow cells to do their job. And so that allows us uh, to make messenger RNA, which is the code to make a protein, okay? And messenger RNA, it turns out, uh, 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 the sequence of messenger RNA determines the amino acid sequence that we are going to be dealing with. In other words, the protein sequence that we're going to be dealing with. So one of the things that confused me as an undergraduate is uh, hearing the word protein, amino acid sequence, peptide, and polypeptide. They're all the same thing. You're just talking about different terms. So it's kind of like uh, you know, there are different names for, I don't know, a, a dog, right? You have a dog, you have a, a canine, and so forth. Protein has a few different words, and that's all based on the field that, that is talking about the same molecule at the time. If uh, we had more time, we could go into that a little bit, but we don't. Now, the job of each protein, or of each amino acid chain, or of each polypeptide, the, each job contributes to the function of the organism by allowing the cells to do what they need to do, okay? And so what we do is we say that each gene confers a trait, which then is a part of what we call the central dogma of genetics. You can also call it the central dogma of biology. So the central dogma is basically DNA to RNA to protein, okay? So, in this central dogma, DNA is able to copy or replicate itself, okay? And then that copy 
gets transcribed into RNA. So DNA replicates, right? Then you have transcription. Then you have translation into the protein, okay? So the big players in our little party here, okay, if I can change my color, is going to be DNA does replication. RNA is transcribed, messenger RNA mostly. And then proteins or polypeptides are the results of translation. So again, remember, a polypeptide is the same thing as a protein. Just so you know, the biologists just call it protein. Protein chemists, organic chemists, call it a polypeptide. And it has to do with the way things are named in chemistry, which we won't deal with right now. So let's do a quick overview of transcription. Genes are expressed, all right? Gene expression is the process by which you get a new protein made. And that's basically DNA going to RNA going to the protein, our central dogma, okay? And it turns out that in eukaryotes and prokaryotes, translation gives you messenger RNA. There are different types of RNA. There are actually quite a few different types of RNA. Messenger RNA carries the code for that given uh, gene sequence. So in other, in other words, for that gene to be expressed or to make that messenger RNA, there are certain parts of, of flanking, what we call flanking sequence, on opposite sides of the gene. So let's pretend this pen is my gene. There's going to be DNA sequence over here and DNA sequence over here on this end that help this gene be expressed. And we call those regulatory sequences. Regulatory sequences are where, believe it or not, other proteins come in and interact with our gene to turn the gene on or to turn it off. So regulatory sequences regulate whether or not the gene uh, is expressed and messenger RNA is transcribed. One of the most important regulatory sequences, okay, is going to be the promoter. That's a big deal. So back to the promoter, sorry, my dog is barking. Uh, the promoter is where other proteins or enzymes. If you remember that 99% of enzymes are all proteins, you'll be in good shape. You know, the other 1% is actually RNA. So promoters are where these enzymes or these proteins sit down on the DNA molecule to turn on the gene. Very, very important. So the region that's copied into RNA, okay, is our gene, all right? Um, you're going to start with, oops, I'm sorry, don't know how that happened there. What we will start with is uh, basically the promoter, the gene sequence, then what we call the terminator. All right, so the promoter is where uh, transcription is turned on. The gene itself is just making, you know, the, the messenger RNA or codes for the messenger RNA. And then the terminator is the end sequence that stops uh, transcription from happening. And so what you're looking at is a situation where, if I can get my pen going here again, you have the promoter that backs up to the actual gene itself, okay? This is the part that makes the messenger RNA. Look at that. I keep picking Christmas colors. I think I want it to be Christmas already. And then you have the terminator. All right. Each one of these sequences has its own, uh, I guess you'd say, rules, which we'll deal with in a little bit. Messenger RNA sequence itself, though, the actual part of the gene that's going to make the messenger RNA within it has a ribosomal binding site. Okay, so that's number one so that the messenger RNA has a spot for the ribosome to interact with and uh, a stop, okay? Yeah, so we'll call this a stop codon. So here's a nicer picture. You know, I should always move forward so that I can look and see if there's a picture. I always forget. <laughs> Anyways, here is kind of what I was trying to draw really lamely. Our regulatory sequences here are promoter, and terminators, okay. Within the promoter, our additional regulatory sequences, don't worry about that right now, okay. Uh, and then you have 
the start sequence right here. The start is where the, the ribosome will eventually add, uh, be added on on the messenger uh, RNA. Here's the start codon. And then you have your stop codon. So this right here, okay, keep in mind what we're dealing with here in this particular case, if I can get another color, this is DNA, all right? Wow, I'm having some major tech problems. Not too major, but this pen, I don't know, maybe I need new batteries. This is all process in DNA. This is all pro process and nomenclature or naming for messenger RNA. So three stages of transcription, initiation, elongation, termination. Initiation is where the RNA polymerase binds to DNA. What is RNA polymerase? RNA polymerase is the enzyme that makes RNA from DNA. Elongation is where RNA polymerase keeps making the new piece of RNA. And then termination is where the RNA polymerase falls off. All right, so there are three steps. One of the things for you to get used to right now is in replication, transcription, and translation. You're always going to have initiation, elongation, and termination. Those three steps are pretty consistent. Here's another figure to show you kind of what's going on. The, uh, mess, the RNA polymerase will grab onto the promoter, okay? The RNA polymerase will move in this direction in this figure, uh, showing the uh, how the RNA polymerase starts unraveling the DNA double helix, reading only one side, only the top or the bottom, all right? Then, when uh, the RNA polymerase hits the terminator down here, the RNA polymerase falls off and releases the completed messenger RNA. Now, depending on if you're dealing with uh, prokaryotic or eukaryotic cells, bacteria or plant animal cells or fungal cells, the process of termination is different, all right? So for now, we're just going to focus on just saying it's termination, the RNA polymerase dissociates or releases from the uh, DNA double helix, the completed transcript or piece of messenger RNA also is released. So RNA transcripts themselves all have different jobs. These transcripts uh, are based on, or each transcript has a different name. We have ribosomal RNA. These are actually the two pieces of RNA, okay, that come together to make a ribosome. Yes, that is my lame drawing, but this is our RNA S or small, that S has a small, uh, has a different size or length depending on what, what organism it's made in. And then you have our RNA L, so creative, right? Large and small. So this is the large subunit, this is the small subunit. Between prokaryotes and eukaryotes, these are gonna be slightly different lengths, but don't worry about that right now. We have transfer RNAs. These work in translation to make proteins. Transfer RNAs carry around amino acids, so we'll get to that in a little bit. These other three classes of RNAs, you don't really need to spend time memorizing, but you should be aware of them. MicroRNAs, um, they can turn off or signal uh, uh, pieces of messenger RNA for destruction. So think about it. Do you want one piece of RNA sitting around in a cell for the entire cell's life, all right, being used over and over and over and over again, all right? It's kind of like wearing the same t-shirt every day. You eventually get a new t-shirt, right? Messenger RNA is very much the same way. Micro RNAs will attach to a piece of messenger RNA, all right, and target it for destruction. Snow RNA helps process ribosomal RNA and SN RNA processes um, messenger RNA. So we call those, that's going to be involved in the formation of SNRPs. Oops, I forgot. So it turns out that there are lots of RNA transcripts that become associated with protein segments. So whenever a protein sticks to something, we call that association. Those are going to be our ribosomes, okay? That's also going to be something called a spliceosome and something called a signal recognition particle, which we'll get to later, okay? So Originally, transcription was studied in bacteria, E. coli specifically. This is where we're going to pick up in the next video, looking at the process of transcription. So hang on to your hats. We're getting ready to do the active process of transcription.